hello. Welcome to church. It's week two of our series, It's Not Fair, yada, yada. We're going to have fun, I'm sure, uh, blah, blah, blah. Great song, fun game, message, uh, Jordan Weston, exit, etc., etc. Uh, hey, Bongo. That sounded really boring, and we've got a super fun service plan that you were supposed to tell them about. Uh, what? Uh, who are you? Bongo, I'm Amy. We work together, and we've got an awesome service we have planned, and it's got this. My mommy dropped me off, and I had my brand new backpack, and my brand new lunchbox, and I was all excited, because Putty was going to be in my class, too. And this. Stop the play! Stop this! Will you stop the play? <laughs> Look what you did. And even this. Two brothers, several grueling track and field competitions. This is sure to be a spectacle, to say the least. All right, if you say so. Bongo! I'm sorry, I'm distracted. I'm working very hard on my newest and greatest ever invention. And what is your invention? Uh, don't worry about it. Um, to be clear, I am very worried about it. That looks terrifying. Science always looks terrifying. Have you looked closely at a garbage disposal? I have. Okay, fine. I am working on the reverse timometer 2020. And that does what? For the sake of time, I'm going to put it in terms that you would understand. Mm -hmm. I've always wanted to ask a few questions of some of our Bible story characters, so I am going to bring them to us. How? Science! Okay, Bongo. You know this isn't going to work, so I'm going to get out of here before something explodes. Do you want something from Starbucks? <sighs> no. All right, fine, a cake pop. Okay, you get it. Now, to give this little beauty a try, I will just push this button over here and... <laughs> it, it worked! Oh, I'm a genius! Wait until I tell everyone that it worked exactly how I intended it to! Um, Bongo, who is that? <sighs> my invention worked! I told you it would! And if my calculations are correct, this is the whale! From Jonah and the whale! Hey, I'm not a whale. I do know who you're talking about, though. I saw that Jonah guy. He was on my ship. It was nuts! Jonah was like, uh, throw me overboard. And I was like, uh, okay. And then a giant whale jumped and ate him. I am so sorry. Um, this must be really confusing for you. We are going to get you back home. Right, Bongo? Hey, it's all good. Not sure what kind of dream this is or where my ship went or what happened. What is that smell? Bongo, you need to get that poor sailor back home. He thinks he's dreaming. Uh, uh, yes, yes, but uh, first let's ask him a question uh, for science. <clears throat> sailor? Yes? Um, you said you saw this whale. Yes. Uh, was he uh, large? Yes. Oh, thank you for your time. Um, Bongo, you just brought a man from the past back into the future. And the only question you wanted to ask him was if the whale that ate Jonah was large. I panicked. That's fair. Um, okay, well, this was not what I was expecting for our service introduction, but we are going to hear a song and listen to the story of Jonah and the whale, who apparently was a large whale, and I'm going to have a conversation with Bongo about his inventions. Yes, and you're going to congratulate me because it worked. It kind of worked. Uh, close enough.
as loud as you can. Jesus is alive right now. You say, say, Jesus is alive right now. Come on, let me hear ya. Shout it out. Jesus is alive right now. Boys, you got in you? And we are back. Welcome once again, ladies and gentlemen, to the 16th annual It's Not Fair Games. Track and field competition at its finest. The It's Not Fair Games only on KOTM Sports. All right, let's get to the action and meet our competitors. We have the Johnson brothers. These brothers are going head to head today in what is sure to be an intense matchup. Roman has been out for the last several months with an injury to his left pinky toe but he seems to have bounced back. And he told us earlier today that he's not worried at all because his pinky toe on his other foot has doubled in strength. Then there's Cameron, a fine competitor putting his flexibility on display. And the crowd is loving it. Two brothers, several grueling track and field competitions. This is sure to be a spectacle to say the least. Let's head to the track for our first event. Up first we have the hurdles. Seriously? What is this? Why do you have such small hurdles? I don't see the Nazi retirement. Does nobody about. else see this? Roman first to his mark. There's the start. Roman taking an early, commanding lead. Cameron seems to be having some trouble with those hurdles. Let's go to the instant replay. I'm coming, Roman. <laughs> Can't win them all. Up next we have the discus. This is historically one of Cameron's strongest events. For those new to the sport, Cameron is holding a five pound disc and his job is to throw it as far as he possibly can. Let's go to the field. Textbook form, a solid toss by Cameron. That score will be tough to beat. Here comes Roman looking very confident. And an effortless toss by Roman. But look at it go! Ah. Roman winning the event yes. by a mile and Woo. winning over what? the crowd. Where'd you get a Frisbee? Take it up with the judges. What? No one expected Roman's total domination. Judges? Least of all Cameron. Are there judges? Let's take it to the shot put field. All right. 16 pounds of oh. iron. See skinny Roman trying to throw this one. Let's see how far Cameron can throw it. Not a bad toss at all. Cameron showcasing the Perfect. benefit of a low center of gravity. Let's see if Roman can respond. Yeah, this is super heavy. I don't want to hurt myself. I think I'll go with this. Roman steps up to the line and lets it fly. Cameron taking a moment to soak it all in. Let's take a look at that replay. And finally, it's time for the 100 meter dash. Cameron has got to be eager to get on the board. Right. What is this? You can't have a bike. I don't see the problem. You know what? It's not fair. I'm out. I'm done. Here we go. The It's Not Fair Games, only on KOTM Sports. 
We'll be right back. I've been waiting all day just to come and be you. <laughs> <laughs> We're not gonna get this, are we? Hold on. Let's just do a stare. <laughs> just give me a reason. <laughs> okay. Hey guys, I'm April. For week one of our series, we talked about what justice is. Today, we are talking about how God views justice. How do you think God looks at justice? How do you think God looks at us? We're going to answer some of those questions in just a bit. <coughs> Excuse me, it is I, Majunga. Yes? And, um... Who are you? I'm April. I work here. I see. And when you started working here, why did no one tell me about this? I'm not sure. But I'm April, and I'm so happy to meet you. I'm sure you are. So what type of grades did you make in school? What? Did you even go to school? Yes, I went to school. <sighs> well, do you have anyone famous in your family? I mean, Noah from the Ark. Oh, yes, Noah from the Ark. He is famous. Wait a minute. Everyone has Noah from the Ark in their family. What is so special about you? Why should you be working here with me? You know, I am a very special Ema, and you are new. Well, I love kids, and I want them to know about God. I think that's a pretty good reason to work here. Well, yes, but are you rich? Do you have a swimming pool full of money or something awesome like that? Like maybe a fountain of jello or a pet zebra, maybe? Majanga, why are you asking her all these questions? Well, I'm just trying to figure out who she is and if she should be here or not. You know, she doesn't seem like she is very extra special at all. Majanga, that is very rude and not at all right. April is just like everyone. Very special. God made her just like he made you and Putu, Bongo, me. Why should you get to decide who's special and who's not special? Well, because, you know, people do that all the time. They decide who is special and who is not extra special. Actually, one time, while I was in school... <laughs> There I was, a little Lima, all ready to learn at my first day of school. It was a new school, and I was a little bit nervous. My mommy dropped me off, and I had my brand new backpack and my brand new lunchbox, and I was all excited because Putu was going to be in my class too. When I got to school, I looked around, and I saw all the different kinds of animal boys and girls going to their classrooms. I walked up to this really, really big hippo, and I asked him if I could sit with him at lunch. But he said, no. He said I needed to sit with the other lemurs, because lemurs are, are loud and annoying and small, and so... I never ate lunch again. Hold up, Majunga. I saw you eat lunch yesterday. Um creative license. Okay. Well, you can't say it's a true story if it isn't a true story. You mean all of Mr. Adam's stories are true? Yes. Oh, well, okay, um, so that is a true-ish story. I'm fine with that. Majunga, that was a very sad true-ish story. I'm so sorry that happened to you. Yes, yes, thank you. It was very, very sad. Well, I'm sorry that happened to you-ish, but just because someone else did not treat you very nicely doesn't mean that you should treat anyone else like they aren't special. Actually, that's what we're going to be talking about today. Our big answer for today is God knows it's not fair. And Majunga, mm -hmm. you could have lunch with us today. Oh, I can. Oh, yeah, I'm so hungry. I'm going to go right now. He's gone. Okay. Okay, well, we'll go catch him, and now let's watch an actual true story. Last night we talked about something really cool. Everything we talk about here in the town hall comes from the Bible. And it's one of our favorite things to tell you awesome stories from the Bible. We told you an awesome story last night, and tonight we're going to tell you another one. And we're going to do it in one of my favorite ways. Ladies and gentlemen, here to help us tell one of my favorite stories, please welcome the mayor of Skittletown, the master of sound effects, Mr. Andrew Dale! Hello. Hi. Hello. Hi. 
Andrew, you ready to tell a great story tonight? Am I? Yes. Andrew, our story is from the Bible, and it features a man named Jonah. You might have heard of him, but it happened a long time ago. In fact, thousands of years ago. So let's rewind back to the time of Jonah. Jonah. Now, Jonah was a prophet. His job was to tell people about God, but he didn't do it just in one place. He traveled all over the place. Uh, Jonah, the tower. You know where you are clear for takeoff of a good flight? Uh... What, what was that sound? Oh, you said Jonah traveled around. He's flying away on a plane. Oh, here it comes again. No, okay, Andrew, um, it's Bible time, so they didn't really have planes yeah, back, back then. Okay, that's just, if we could stop that, that oh, would be better. No, okay. If you could just stop that plane, will you please stop, stop the plane? Stop, will you stop the plane? <laughs> Look what you did. They didn't have planes back then, man. Sorry, totally space. Yeah, they had motorcycles. Wait, no, they had like, like camels and donkeys. Sorry, they had donkey cycles. What? It's exhaust. One day, God told Jonah that he was going to preach at a place called Nineveh. Ooh, Nineveh, beautiful. Yeah, it wasn't a great place. It's terrible. Nineveh was full of really mean people. <gasps> the kind of people who worshiped idols. Oh. Who took what wasn't theirs? Give me that. Jonah was afraid. He didn't want to go to Nineveh. So he decided to disobey God. And he boarded a ship that was headed in the exact opposite direction. And everything seemed fine at first. When suddenly, Jonah felt a slight gust of wind. <laughs> Just regular wind. Oh, sorry. It began to pick up. It blew harder and harder. It created waves crashing into the side of the ship. Suddenly, Jonah found himself in the middle of a huge storm. He went to the captain. He said, this is because of my disobedience. Throw me overboard and it'll stop. So the crew grabbed Jonah and threw him over the side of the ship. He hit the water with a great splash. Cannonball. Jonah sunk towards the ocean floor. Jonah was afraid he was going to drown when suddenly the water that surrounded him began to rumble. He looked below and he saw the eyes of a great, big, giant whale. The whale swam towards Jonah and swallowed him whole. Tastes like chicken. Jonah was inside the belly of this great beast and it was hot and dark and slimy and it smelled like fish guts. Oh, gross. Fish butts. Fish guts. That's what I said, fish butts. Um, oh, uh, say fish. Fish. Say guts. Guts. Put them together. Fish butts. For three days and three nights, Jonah was inside the belly of this great beast. Finally, he did the right thing. He called out to God and asked God to forgive him for being disobedient, for not going to Nineveh. At that, the whale swam to the top of the sea and spit him out. <laughs> He's stuck. <laughs> Jonah flew through the air and landed on the shore. <laughs> the, the whale turned around and swam back into the ocean. Bye, buddy. Hope you find your dad. Jonah got up, and he cleaned himself off, and he headed to Nineveh. On his donkey cycle. When he got there, he stood before the big gate, the big, giant, large door, and he knocked on it. Ding dong! The gate swung open, and there Jonah found himself staring into the face of the people of Nineveh. Ooh, who was that guy? Jonah preached to the people of Nineveh, and they confessed their sins and their wicked ways as well. They became right before God. On that day, because Jonah did the right thing, because he confessed his sins, not only was he rescued from the whale, but the people of Nineveh were saved as well. Ladies and gentlemen, a big round of applause for our friend, Mr. Andrew Dale.
Hey guys, Jordan here. I am so excited to be with you guys today. We are in week two of our series, It's Not Fair. This series is all about justice. And today we're talking about how God views justice. Now to do that, I have some Legos here to show you. Now, when we start off, we are babies, right? Little tiny babies. Maybe you have some babies at your house. I have a brand new baby at my house. She's my little daughter and her name is Willow. You wanna see her? We love you. Ah, she is so cute. Okay, so starting when we are little babies, the world looks for things in us that maybe make us better than the other babies. So let's pretend that this color represents baby Zoe. And let's pretend that this color represents baby... Trunks! <laughs> okay, trunks. Now, baby Zoe starts walking before baby Trunks, so the world gives her a Lego. You see that? She's one Lego higher. She talks before Trunks learns to talk. Maybe Trunks learns to read first, and he's the fastest reader in his class, so he gets a Lego. Maybe Zoe is really great at math, and she doesn't need any help on her homework. Maybe Trunks is the fastest player on his team or has the nicest clothes. Maybe Zoe's mom or dad is the principal and she gets extra attention from her teachers. These are all things that don't make you better than anyone else, but the world says they do. And that's not fair. And you know what? God knows it's not fair. God started us all on the same level. He gave all of us gifts and talents, not to make us better than each other, but to help us help each other. Maybe you're a really great athlete. Instead of making the less athletic kids feel bad about not being great at sports, God made you an athlete so that you could reach people around you that love to watch sports. Or maybe you can help the other athletes on your team by inviting them to church. Now the world is not fair. They make some people special and other people not so special. Sometimes there are famous people that are not nice people. Sometimes people do really well in life, even though we may think that they don't deserve it. But here's the trick. We have these different levels of people, just like I have these different levels of Legos here. And from here, we make a decision on who is better. But what happens when we look at the world from God's point of view? You see, neither Lego is stacked higher than the other. They're on the same level. That's because God just sees people. When we look at the story of Jonah, we see people who were used by God like Jonah and people who were really disobedient like the Ninevites. And they are all on the same level. He sees the people that he loves and the people that he made, the people that he sent his son to die on the cross for. The Bible says to love our neighbor as ourselves. That means that we love ourselves too. We shouldn't be adding or subtracting Lego tiles from the other people or from our own worth either. When I believe that someone else is better than me, I'm believing a lie. And when I believe that I'm better than someone else, I'm also believing a lie. Those lies are not fair to anyone and God knows they are not fair. Our whole job is to love people like God loves people, not like the world loves people. This week, I want you to practice loving people the way God does, and I will too. Like for instance, we can love people by listening. When we let others talk and when we listen to them, we can make them feel special. When we do that, we'll be helping to make our world a better place. Right, Trunks? Trunks! <laughs> okay. Do you know what I love about Jesus? It's that he treats everyone fairly. It doesn't matter if you are mean to others. It doesn't matter if you've treated other people fairly or unfairly. He treats you and me fairly. That's because he loves us. He was sent here by his father to be with us, to show us that we can love other people and that we can treat others fairly. That makes me want to live like him. That makes me want to walk and talk like him. And if that makes you want to live like him too, then let's say a prayer together. Say, dear heavenly father, thank you for loving me. Thank you for treating me fairly. 
thank you for sending Jesus into the world to die for me. I believe that he rose again and I believe that he is Lord. Lord Jesus, I love you. Help me to live like you. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey guys, I'm Sunal and today we are doing our memory verse challenge. Our memory verse for this series is found in Micah 6, 8. Let's read it together. O oh people, the Lord has told you what is good, and this is what He requires of you, to do what is right, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. And there you have it. You can post your video online, tag us, and you'll be entered to win a Lego Disney castle. Now to help us remember our memory verse better, I'm going to bring in two friends to help us play a game. Hey guys! Here's what they're going to do. The words are scrambled on these Legos. Our friends are going to race to see who can build their Lego tower the fastest with the verse in the right order. Are you ready? Three, two, one, go! Great job and thanks for playing. See you next time.
Well, guys, we hope you had so much fun with us today. Parents, for more resources to contact one of our kids' pastors or to receive Kids on the Move updates, text the word KIDS to 23101. Kids, don't forget about our memory verse challenge. When you memorize Micah 6, 8 and have an adult send in the video to us on Instagram or Facebook, you'll be entered to win a Lego Disney castle. It's awesome. Tag us at KOTM Memory Verse Challenge and get memorizing. All right, guys, we love you so much and we'll see you next week.